Hi everybody, I'm Chris from Race Car Camp. Wanted to thank you for coming along this motor rebuild journey with us. If this is the first video that you're watching with us, go back to, we have head removal and head rebuild already complete. This video is gonna be all bottom end rebuild. Uh, we're gonna tear it down, check all our tolerances. We're gonna go through a lot of specialty tools and I think this is the part that most people are scared about doing on their own. I'll link you to all the specialty tools that we're using here. It's probably about $300 in total to do the whole motor. Now these are entry level tools, they're not master mechanics, but we're building a streetcar motor. We're not building a ridiculous track monster. Uh, for 90% of the people who may be watching this video, that should be more than enough. First up is tear off of the very, very dirty oil pan. Just like everything else on this car, this oil pan and baffle needs cleaned. So onto the bucket of kerosene for our standard degreaser. Now I'm going to take the flywheel bolts off. So I gotta use my clever flying Miata crank tool. This is genius and worth every dollar of whatever it costs, but I got mine forever ago, so I don't know anymore. If you plan ahead, you can take your flywheel off before you put it on the engine stand. I have three motors in my garage right now, so that wasn't as easy for me to do, so I gotta fish the flywheel out from the back. Now that that's off, I can come back into the garage and just begin to take off the accessories on the front. We're going to first measure for uh, rod clearance. 0.012 is the limit, and we cannot get our 0.012 in there, so we are within good. Now I can go a little smaller and check the slot that way to get the final measurement, but I'm really just concerned with what the uh, max tolerance is. and we're good. Just like the head, we're gonna use some specialty cardboard to keep ourselves organized. So now we'll take the connecting rods off. There's not a whole lot to this either. 14 mil is pretty much the whole motor. We're gonna do front, rear, one, two, three, four. Do all these a half turn first. Keep your bearing in there. Careful not to score the crank. Drop it out. And then each one is marked. You see the mark? This is two. And then the dash mark will line up uniquely. And then two, and that's so that you don't lose it. The rings actually don't look too bad on this. I'm slightly surprised. All our connecting rods are out. Bearings are out. You see a little bit of scoring on one, which isn't great. Uh, actual crank looks okay, and we're going to put new bearings in, so that will be good. Um, next, we're going to check crankshaft play. Um, the service limit is 0 .012, which is about to there. And we're well under half of that, so we're at 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh boy, 0 .004. So that is... Uh, absolutely fine good standard limit um, nothing that needs adjusting which is good so next we'll take the caps out and the crank out Okay, so I loosened all the main caps. You do it in order that they go, and then just lift them up. It's gonna be a tight fit because you have a bearing in there. 
And then again, front to back. Try not to drop the bolt like I did. And you'll notice as well that they have an arrow facing the front. And sometimes they'll be marked by which order they went in at. Mine are not marked, so I'm just going to do a score um, of each one to mark its location. So, like this was one, this is two, this is. Oh, that one has a stamp three. Oh, I wonder if it's just too dirty. They may actually be stamped. Mine are just too bad. Four, and then this is five, but I can make it out as well. So that's it. I'm going to take each one off, and then out comes the crankshaft. Change your oil. if this weren't still attached. A little thrust bearing to measure the piston to bore clearance. Now we have everything in the order that it came out and using our caliper We're going to get a measurement for the cylinder size. Be sure you're taking this below that scuff ring. We'll zero our gauge, see what size we're dealing with here. The nice thing about working with this style caliper is that you don't have to use another feeler gauge. We're going opposite jacket to opposite jacket. So now we have our size. Piston to bore clearance standard is 0.0016 to 0.0020. And right about 16 thousandths right at the low end of good so that's good wash rinse repeat for each piston now we're going to check the crank with the micrometer be very ginger as you don't want to mar anything up we are at 1965 19661 so we're right inside that we're perfect check the next one 19664 so again we're good 19665, so we're good. 19666, 19664. That's all good. Now the connecting rod 1.769, 1 1.769, so we're good. 1.768, 1 1.768, 1.769. Okay, so we are good. All our in spec measurements on the crank bearings, the play, the piston clearance, all of that means that we get to rebuild this motor with OEM sized bearings. We don't have to order anything special, we don't have to overbore anything, and it means we get to move right along in the next video with assembly.